Okay. Okay. This is what I did. Uh, I did this for you uh, last night. I just want to give you three layers of aspect interpretation because this is real important that you understand when you're interpreting charts and you're doing. Thank you for that. I'm picking them up. She needs some love and she's hurting. I think she's hurting. So three layers of aspect interpretation, okay? Mental, emotional, and physical. Oh, this is what's going to make you a good astrologer, is understanding this. The mental, the emotional, and physical. The overlooked meaning of astrological interpretation. Okay, the sun, we say it rules what? Your spirit, your life, your ego need for recognition and praise. Okay, it's what it represents. Sun is the conscious mind, the spirit, the will, purpose, and life force. Okay? The son equals the loving father, if it's in your chart. It's a, it represents a loving father. Saturn is the disciplined father. Saturn represents the rule maker. You will not do this. That's Saturn, okay? Um, uh, I set the limits. That's Saturn. The son isn't that way. So when you look at uh, to see a, fir a person's father in a chart, you kind of look at both of those symbols, not just one. It's important. Now, not that the mother couldn't be that Saturn in that chart as well. She can be. Yeah, 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 and because they're, they're two different. Like, for example, my, my, my son's chart, he's, he's got a real uh, affliction with Saturn in his chart, which is me, the father. Whenever I try to be the disciplinarian, I ran up against the willful Leo, my son, that was just powerfully resisting any kind of discipline from me. Okay, so there's two aspects, you know. So anyway, okay, so the son is loving. Son equals the heart, the back. It's courage. Okay, the Leo the Lion, courage. I was watching a long thing last night on TV uh, on Discovery Channel of, uh, uh, of the lions. Oh, they're so terrible things. You know, we think of lions as the end, uh, but they kill, their, they kill the young of the mothers continually. Uh, if they take over a pride, they kill every little, little cub there is. Kill them all. So that they put the mother, the mother goes back into... Um, like heat, I guess you call it. They call it something else. But the, basically what it does, it forces the mother to become sexual again. And it's a savage world when you see it. But anyway, enough of that. So the, what is the sun? Leo, the lion, uh, heart, back, courage. That rules the back, okay? The upper back particularly. Uh, determination and purpose in life. The closest, this is important. I'll teach this maybe if we have time in this class. I have a session I can do on it. The closest aspecting planet to the sun is the strongest area of the need for praise. In other words, for example, my, my, my sun is at five degrees. You like this, you love this. Uh, my Mars is at five degrees, Pisces. Five degrees, five degrees are exact a aspect square. My ego need, and I have to be self-reflective and honest with myself, has always been how tough I am. Forgive me. After nine years in prison, I mean, I can tell you a lot of war stories, but I always thought I was, uh, thought of myself as kind of the fighter. You know, I could, I could handle it. Didn't matter if it was six feet, ten feet tall. I was going to take them on, because I, I always had that quality in my life. But that's something I needed praise for. I knew it was kind of ego stuff talking. You see what I'm talking about? So, here's an, a positive side of that. One of my students, who I had private tutored for, for ten weeks, and then he came back for ten more weeks took two sessions with me, plus he sat in one of these classes. And then he said, Ron, I want private tutoring. And I took, tutored him for 20 weeks. He has a son that's got autism, 20-some years old, 23 or 4. I, I'm not sure exact age. He's in his 20s. And um, his aspect in his son's chart, in the autistic child's chart, is a son Mars like mine. Guess what his father did? He put him in martial arts. He's excelling. He's so proud. He, Dad, did you see what I did? This an autistic child that is an adult. Aut autism so lack in communicating, just withdrawn. It pulled him out totally, martial arts. And he's extraordinarily good at it. But who would have known to look at a chart and say, you know what this boy needs? He needs to be involved in martial arts. What? An autistic child? I'm not going to put him in my He'll get hurt, you know? Uh-uh. It blossomed him. His name's Tim. He's a good friend of mine. He's become a good friend as well. The interesting thing about Tim, Tim walked into this class. Was anybody in that class when Tim walked in? Tim walked in. Um, 
I knew Tim in Chicago when he was a young boy. And his brother was killed in a car accident when I was there. Beautiful boy. Beautiful boy. He's going on to college. And, he, and uh, that's a long story. But uh, Tim recognized who I was. I had done charts for their families back many, many, many years when he was 12 years old. For his, his, he said, my mom still has your charts that you did for her, the readings you did. But that's how many years ago. My God, that's amazing. And he walks in, he recognizes him. Ron said, I know who you are. But... Uh, Okay, so the sun, spirit, life, okay? Let's go on. Moon, the soul, the feelings, the touch. You can't see anything anymore. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, the moon, the soul, the feelings, the touch, subconscious mind, feelings, touch, nurturing. Do you remember last week there was a girl here and I said, yeah, moon and Capricorn, you don't like to be touched? Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the moon, right? Why, why did I know that? Because Capricorn is fearful, resist, you know, it, it blocks things, you see? But she likes to be touched by those that she's close to, okay? But if she doesn't know you and you come up and touch her, she would withdraws, okay? Moon and Capricorn, just alone. If you afflict it, make it, put it in the crosses and things like that, then you get more meaning, right? Maybe she's been touched in a way that's not too healthy and where she's really withdrawing. Maybe she's been assaulted. Maybe she's had sexual, you know, touching that she didn't like or, yeah, who knows? But the point be the chart, you look at the whole chart and you start seeing things, okay? Okay, so, okay, moon is your habits. Oh, it's your nurturing also. What, who, how you nurture others and how you relate to others emotionally. Okay, so the moon is your habits, your food addictions. That's important. I've been doing radio shows for years. I, did, I had one up here for a while in the local area, and a lady called in, and she had a really um, uh, bad affliction with the moon and Saturn. I said, you've got a lot of problems with weight. You've been struggling with it all your life. She about fell over. She's on a phone with me. You know, she came, she became my student, actually. She came to my classes. But uh, I said, how could you know that? She said, you know, this has been a battle of my life, you know. And I knew it because Saturn is, is, is where an area of, of, uh, of, of conflict and, and uh, self-worth, okay. And the moon is her nurture. She, and she's fighting, constantly fighting this battle, Saturn, with the moon, the, the nurture need, the need to be mothered. What do you do when you cry? As a child, you get a breast put in your mouth and let's squat her down. Let's give them something to eat. Let's put, give them some milk. That's in our nature, okay? It's part of our nature. We still do the same thing. If we're frustrated, what do we do? We go to the refrigerator, right? Let's get something to eat. Let's get some carbs. We'll feel better, all right? So anyway, so the moon is habits, food addictions, unconscious behavior, emotional needs. It's the child within us, the mother, the home, security, domesticity, and stomach, the breast. It rules all these things, see? So if I see somebody has Mars squaring the moon, I think I did that in this class, or was I was talking about, was it in this class? And I said, you know, there's stomach ulcers. She said, how'd you know that? You know, Mars is acidic, and it hurts, it scars, it wounds, it's afflicting the moon. The moon is the stomach, okay? Um, and Oh, I know, it's one of my students was, was, I thought it was in this class. Somebody said, yeah, no, he's always got an acidic stomach. Anyway, it wasn't in here, okay. Always got, you know, over acid, acid reflux. Was it you? What was it talking about? Yeah, yeah, because that's Mars. He has a Mars and moon affliction. Now, I knew that, and I never met the guy. Yeah, I met him. I went to his wedding. I was there to photograph it. But the point being is I could never know those things, you know. So where do we get this stuff from? Astrology. It's amazing. You don't have to, you don't have to be a doctor to see it. Hippocrates said uh, a physician who practices medicine without a knowledge of astrology is a fool. <laughs> it's a, the founder of medicine? Amazing, huh? Okay, the stomach, the breast. Okay, so if I see, if I see these aspects, they tell me, they talk to me, they say something. Okay, I told you about the woman I did the reading for, and she's sitting there, and I see Mars afflicting her, Mars af uh, afflicting her, her moon in her 12th, 12th house, and I say, you know, you were stabbed in the breast in the past life. Remember I told you the story? Yeah. And she, I said, you should have a scar there. She says, I do. How would I know that? Huh? 